Hello boys, this video is sponsored by Paradox. I was at Paradox HQ playing the first ever multiplayer session of Arms Against Tyranny with these content creators. I played as Finland with the other Nordic countries of Alex the Rambler, Bitter Steel, and Stuki, if I pronounced that right. Our goal was to survive versus feedback gaming on Germany and Toriyor on Russia, and it was really fun. Today I'm doing a voiceover because uh, I had some audio issues at Paradox's office when we were recording this multiplayer session and uh, it sounded like a Russian CSGO lobby. Hence, I will be doing a voiceover today. I hope you guys still enjoy. So in the start of Finland, I really just tried to uh, kind of cheese my way through the civil war. It was the best way to get through it is, uh, well, you know, exploiting the fact that the other side, the democratic side, when you rush to getting a fascist civil war, doesn't get any mills. Does not spawn with any mills, at least not in that patch of the game. But I was like, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna exploit that fact by doing a rush for the Civil War. I don't need any preparation for it. I just delete the gun stockpile once the war happens, and uh, then they can't produce anything. I can produce two with units and just take them down, you know? Simple as. And here in the Civil War, just like plan kind of. I, I just snake them down, you know? No no issue, I snake them down. Pretty easy, you know? They did get one unit out because I uh, forgot I, I deleted gun stock to stockpile a bit too early, but it's still easy civil war. For two days I produced guns, they got half of them, that's it. So they did get one unit out, but it did not matter. Then, using the new MIO system, I was kind of figuring it all out as I went because that was the first time I ever played Arms Against Turkey and it was like really um, a lot of stuff to go through to get the, the hang of it all, you know? And I, I want to focus on the real base camp. I look white as shit. I am the whitest person you have ever seen. Like, you see the people standing next to me. They're not that white. My second plan in this game was to at least get some eco to be able to fight against the Soviets. So I decided to invade uh, Estonia and the other Baltic countries. Estonia was uh, not really a sweep, but it wasn't hard either, right? The other Baltics, so to speak, they were, they were a sweep. Yeah, weren't really punished for anything either. Could have been a bit faster about it. Estonia, big sweep. Easy gains. Easy gains for Dunkus. Extra white tank is on the case. I was hyped up as shit when I got Estonia because I was like, hey, I I'm now gonna be able to form some kind of Nordic country, right? Surely with course. But uh, I kind of misread focus and I don't get core from annexing the Baltics. I was kind of desperate for manpower, as you can see at this point, with only 30. I don't think thousand, and uh, that is quite bad manpower wise. I only have 21 divisions, not even that big of divisions, you know, like they're not quality of any kind. Finland's struggle really was manpower. So I, I did decide fascism was the way to go for that. Denmark invites it. Yes, so basically what's happened here, uh, Alex the Rambler playing uh, Denmark, he got the idea that, hey, no, we can form a Nordic council. We were supposed to do this strat anyhow, where we all hold off against Soviets and Germany and he was like hey I got a focus I can just do that you guys can do whatever you can all just join me when I do the focus it's kind of easy here to take out a uh, mr. what's this country called Estonia Lithuania hey yo Joe Biden I don't care I conquered that shit okay I conquered that shit there you go uh Latvia but yeah anyhow here we're kind of looking better and better I'm just fighting down the last one Lithuania kind of shitting my pants here because the Soviet player conquered Romania he conquered like Turkey and shit like that that was scary because he had a big potential eco right like he he had been conquering nations since like day one I'm here sitting in like mid 38 I barely conquered two Baltic nations I declare on Mr. Lithuania and I I, I capitulate that shit quick big snake and then ah dead Something you'll notice also here in these battles is that my units are actually getting better. Like they're actually starting to get stats because I get better equipment. I actually have doctrine a bit more now. I have actual templates that aren't like eight wits infantry pure, you know? Um, yeah, what you'll also notice is factory hasn't grown by that much considering I've conquered three nations. I'm sitting at 47 factories. That is nothing. However, I didn't realize this at the time, but actually puppeting them makes it a way better choice. Uh, you get way more factories, they do all the country focuses, and you get like all of their resources, uh, like all of their fo uh, what's called factories through the focuses, and also when you conquer them, you can demand factories, you can demand resources. You become way stronger just puppeting them. Plus, they dump out like, I don't know, three units a year, you can use as port garrisons. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that bad, it's really not. You get extra out of it, basically. 
This took my claim here. Uh, a slight alliance with Germany. But uh, it was a short-lived one. Because uh, I later on left uh, Germany's alliance to go help my brothers. And also, I got really confused by this. They changed the slot of the gun on the tank. I was like getting a stroke because I was like, wait a minute. Where is the gun? I'm like now looking at turrets at the gun slot, but it's no longer the gun slot. Here, yeah, man, power is still an issue, man. We're talking mid-39, I conquered three nations. I'm on extensive, probably even service by requirement at this point, and I'm struggling. I'm hella struggling. So I did decide later on to go for some of those special uh, support companies, but I wasn't like confident in using them as much as I was with the stuff I already knew what it came, right? Here, Russia got like more mills than I have factories in grand total. Not looking augers for the boys. I decided that, hey, they have better economies than me. Why is this? Okay, you know what? Let's try this. I'll release my, uh, my actually conquered territories as puppets. And we'll see if it actually helps. Also, a really fun thing about this politic system here. Or like public trust matters a shit ton. So why it matters is because... Um, with the more public trust you have, the more Sisu spirit you get as Finland. Guess what? I had negative public trust. A game? I had a shit. A very shit Sisu spirit. I could have had, I don't know, 25% core stats, you know, the attack and defense, but I, I, I pulled this out with nothing. I'm, I'm that guy, man. I'm that guy. I don't need the Sisu spirit being 25% extra stats. Quickly though, back to the puppeting. I released my puppets. I gained manpower because I was obviously occupying it with my own manpower before that. And I was now also getting 75% of my puppet's eco, which is way better than just getting, I don't know, 50% and occupying it. I mean, it wasn't great. Through here, I decide to make my small divisions uh, a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. I wanted to improve the artillery in them uh, to make them have actual stats. You can see there, the soft attack has gone way up. All I need is the production at this point. Manpower is kind of stabling out. Uh, not really. Look at this manpower here. I, I need 105k, I have 34k available. I realized, hey, I don't have any supply in the north. This is horrible. I haven't prepared for this war. Uh, so I decided I have to fall back. I really have to fall back. Otherwise, issues will arise. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't the greatest game plan overall here, right? But uh, I managed to get the infantry uh, advisor in time. I'm even lacking trains, not just motorized for my supply. Everything is looking down. And here comes the Winter War. Soviets declare. I get a little bit of a spirit. I kind of panic a bit here because I realize, okay, a lot of my eco is invested into the Baltics. I already don't have the eco to do that much. Oh, and very cool sniper event. So the Soviets have to deal with some very, uh, I guess you could say cancerous decisions. I'm up with like, hey, the enemy has snipers shooting your troops. Uh, you'll get negative stuff if you don't deal with it. And to deal with it, you have to waste stuff. And there's only a chance of you fixing it. Yeah, we're basically the real life finish. We're holding them off. Not really at the border this time, right? But, um, you know, if I would have built up supply, it would have been fixed and all fine. I didn't, you know, for future reference. I tried my luck here at uh, Leningrad and it actually seemed to have war. I mean, the Soviets had a lot of defense on their units, but I actually just got enough stats to actually take it out. Now, something that did surprise me, these infantry pushes now. I feel like I've always liked a mobile front. Like, no matter what you might see with my heavy tank Russia build tutorial, you know, I like a mobile front where you have to micro. And uh, this actually gave me that. Like, uh, this border here in Finland was very fun to micro in. It was bad supply for both sides, <laughs> definitely, as you can see. But um, it was definitely... Like, probably very stressful for the Soviet player to have to have micro all of this big fun and do like a way bigger nation as the Soviet and everything. Yeah, here I just try to make some gains, maybe take some of the actually fun part of this. The Soviet player started to start building supply hubs. Now, what do I do? I'm poor as shit here in Finland. But guess what? He's not. I'm gonna go take that wealth. I'm fucking Robin Hood over here distributing a, the supply to myself, essentially. I'm not really Robin Hood, am I? But I'm close enough. The counteroffensive begins. I have manpower. I have some equipment. You know? It's starting to look better and better. I can even do doctrines. Now, the counteroffensive in the north was really easy due to the supply situation for the Soviets. I, I did take a lot of supplies they built, and they basically had nothing left. And then it was just me taking that supply out and then 
rolling over them in the north. It felt good to just micro like that, but uh, yeah, the, the harder part came to getting across the actual rivers in the USSR. Now remember, this is a player, not AI. He produces more than the AI does. Like he produces better stuff too. I had to be careful with what I pushed, how I pushed, and with what I pushed, I guess. And I'm realizing here, hey, I've actually cleaned up the north. And as much as I just wanted to take my homeland back and prove that Finland's a strong nation, guys, you can just, you can survive against the Soviets. I was like, you know, that's not enough to prove. You can see it on my face right now on the screen. It's not enough to prove that Finland can survive. You have to show that Finland can thrive. It's my inner Finnish telling me that thanks. You have to kill him. Get the winter logistics, thanks. Get the winter logistics. Yes, yes, thank us. No, yes, yes. Winter logistics are very good when there's snow out. Like, very good. So, very cool country-specific thing that Finland gets. Definitely a worthwhile investment playing Finland. Yeah, it's starting to make some progress into the USSR right now. And I realize, he's, I, I don't have to supply to push. But then I see, I see the golden moment of opportunity. He's building supply hubs for me. And if I just push a bit deeper with no supply, I can actually, like, actually get the supply ups and keep pushing. There was a constant thing of him needing supply to survive against my push. And when he got the supply, I went and took the supply. Although, Torrier was very good at doing these very, very big invasions. He just did an invasion. I didn't even see it. And then, oh, what? My country snaked down? I have to go up and I have to kill. It's like a month wasted, you know? Like, the game was moving here not too rapid, but here, going all adult serve now, and I'm, I'm still very low on manpower. There you can see one of those supply ups that I was talking about that he built, that I'm now just connecting to my own line in order to be able to push him instead. Just making small pockets everywhere is good. You make a uh, small, but, you know, significant progress in the meanwhile. And cool guy with the camera going behind me, because back of my head, it's, it's bald as shit, man. It's really bald here. Take a look. Bald as shit, right? You seen the new, um, like, uh, MIOs, yeah? MIOs. I, I upgraded my guns and I put them into production. Now in Sweden, I'd sent one division and more was coming. Because I realized that, hey, Sweden is dying. He might have fast tanks, this guy, man, but, uh, speed isn't everything. So I tried to see, can I touch the Germans? You can see that I can't pierce them. I try so hard here to make some kind of play that makes the Germans kind of sweat, you know? Like, you gotta make them sweat. When they sweat, they make mistakes, they push a bit far in the regain lost land and such, right? Which means that I actually got the upper advantage. Here are kind of plan just a naval invasion. See if I could get something off uh, behind them. Here my invasion comes in and it's actually succeeding both in Mal Malma and Kar Karlskrona. Yes, both the tiles are building. Very nice. This led me to have way better supply than them and I actually push these uh space marines finally which felt really really good but okay another huge invasion that i have to deal with and it's not looking but uh you know we still have the port in norsha thing and kind of solved itself once they snaked out because i just took their port and they never really reconnected to the main front from as much remember and also down here in the south they were doing really poorly at this point that uh it was kind of fine if they got that landing get reclaimed the south so Half. It's gonna be kind of fine with all of this. Yeah, as you can see here, we're not really making any significant progress here in Sweden. I went to the other port to make sure they don't get it. Filling off some pockets here to make sure they're dead. And I'll look back at the main front and everything is kind of cool. Because my units can hold really, really well. Going into Oslo here uh, against the German invasion, which actually... How much of they grabbed and here comes Finland to sweep them into the ocean. And sure enough, I did. Yeah, the Dankus sweep, and the Dankus sweep continues throughout the game. I guess the Soviet player, he did have a lot of divisions, but he did get a lot of equipment issues uh, having this many units, because he went for quality instead of quantity, which actually didn't work, because he needed more and more units, which meant that all of them just had bad equipment status, which meant that all of them just had worse stats in the end. So he felt like that was a mistake, as far as I remember, but definitely though, like, it felt so good making all these huge pockets here. Because, you know, like, you're encircling hundreds of thousands each pocket almost. Whatever, claiming the Baltic was kind of the easy part because, uh, well, the AI started giving me factories, which is even a boost. My push pushing, then I get economically boosted by the AI. Coming back and 
my puppet. Uh, freeing up pockets also frees up divisions, so I can make new pockets. Rinse and repeat. Literally. Rinse and repeat. At this point, I was north, east, south, west of Moscow, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so I was kind of trying to cut his supply lines off with that one division snaking south of it. In the east, I just tried to make a bridgehead so he couldn't get supply behind the girls and such. I tried to encircle Moscow. You fuck up supply at least somewhere by doing this. I tried a couple of times here again. Just naval invading me. It was so annoying because you had to constantly look. Hey, have I been naval invaded again, man? Now, the siege of Moscow was kind of interesting because uh, it was actually the units on the inside not having supply. <laughs> it was a lot of units, as you might see here. What was that, like 60 divisions? Uh, made some more progress in the north and then a huge invasion. I look away, then there's another massive invasion in my country. That's why I wanted to rush down for the coast of the Baltics at this point, kind of just to make sure I don't get invaded anymore. At this point, you can tell he's even more depleted stockpile wise because he has to keep it like <laughs> replenishing units that he doesn't have the equipment for. And I'm sitting here with very good equipment status and I can just still out trade him IC wise in every battle, even on the offense. Like really, really good. Snaking all of Russia down was very fun because finally he had to deal with a lot of micro. It was mostly like an actual front line at first, right? And now at this point, I'm just snaking. He does not have the hands for all of this snaking with me and the AI snaking him down, you know? You get the mental defeat because you cannot mentally defeat an AI, yeah. But a player, a player you can mentally, and that was the whole game plan here. Mentally defeat him and it's over. And I would say I succeeded considering I'm now way behind Stalingrad and <laughs> you know the snakes are just continuing and there's nothing at this point he can really do and I continue for Sevastopol I continue for cleaning up all the pockets I for keep snaking into the Urals I got a quite a big invasion army of Sevastopol there just to make sure it dies quick he doesn't build forts and roach it out because that's actually a major VP I need I didn't really want to fight Turkey there were a puppet of the Soviets but I was like okay I'll make a bit of a bridgehead into them just to make sure that if the Soviets don't die, well, there you go. Yeah, I was there to just prove that Finland can hold the Soviets. But what I ended up showing was that you can kill the Soviets. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. So here uh, Denkus describes that um, you have to like the video and subscribe. And he also mentions you have to watch these videos.